automating PLS certificate management using Certificate Manager and HashiCorp Vault. My name is Jacob, and I'm a senior systems engineer at Quantcast. Hi, my name is James, and I'm also a senior systems engineer at Quantcast. Quantcast is an American AI-driven real-time advertising tech company. Our agenda for today covers all topics listed on this slide and we'll go into more detail on the respective slides. Hi, so to start things off, um, our presentation uh, revolves around rotating certificates at Quantcast and how we changed uh, systems in place that we previously had. Um, so to start things off, Quantcast, similar to many other technology companies, uh, we have a wide variety of use cases for issuing and using certificates in our systems. To give some more direct uh, reference to this, we use certificates through AWS Cert Manager directly for AWS load balancers. Additionally, we often need certificates directly on our systems for other reverse proxy solutions. Very often, uh, we use certificates for mutual TLS authentication as well. Uh, we frequently use a uh, Vault's PKI secret engine for that with imported CAs. And, uh, also, um, for audibility and role-based access control, specifically using those API integration with the vault make that very easy for us. So um, although nothing was inherently broken with our previous methods of handling a certificate issuance and retrieval at our company, there was a lot of improvements that could be made. And occasionally, we'd experience some incidents related to certificate rotation certificate expiration. Uh, some domains were issued by hand due to organization validation being used, which was later figured not to be an explicit requirement. Uh, we used multiple certificate authorities with teams rolling their own certificate issuance means um, creating kind of a lack of homogeneity in that space. Also as well, costly multi-domain certificates and costly organization validation with certificate authorities uh, charging a lot just for an additional SAN, for instance. And as well as uh, there'd be a relatively infrequent annual rotation cycle where institutional knowledge could potentially be lost in the course of that time frame. So uh, yeah, this, this slide is very much a tongue in cheek. Uh, the, the, there wasn't this much complexity or messiness in our, in our setup, but uh, th there was a lot of folks reinventing the wheel and rolling their own retrieval methods as well as their own issuance methods uh, for certificates. This lack of standardization also left a policy management in Vault a real headache to work with. Uh, multiple CAs were being used with, in, in some cases, manual validation um, and a lack of like just standardized monitoring around those processes. So, uh, yeah, needless to say, it wasn't a great situation, although. It is a bit of an exaggeration for that slide. Um, so enter Certificate Manager, a Kubernetes service that solved a lot of problems for us in this area. Cert Manager has custom resources that can link up with virtually any trusted certificate authority, and as well as Vault for internal CA, uh, for, for internal certificate issuance through automated challenges. Uh, for instance, there's an Acme integration that can use DNS challenges, as well as a Vault, which can use a variety of authentication means with Vault. For a particular setup, we use Kubernetes authentication roles, which work great and are very secure. Uh, we also put uh, some toolings, such as Terraform, to manage cluster issuer resources uh, for Cert Manager, uh, which was also very convenient. So here's a high-level overview of how we leverage a certificate manager for certificate issuance at our company. Uh, we have cluster issuers primarily for Let's Encrypt for Vault across and uh, Let's Encrypt and Vault for all domains that we care for. The cluster issuer support for Vault's PKI, PKI engine was very easy to configure with Kubernetes authentication role and provides us with a lot of continued utility in the space. Uh, the Acme configuration additionally worked excellent for Let's Encrypt and uses Kubernetes service accounts with AWS IAM access so we can facilitate making those challenge records um, easily and securely. After issuance, a job pulls our Kubernetes secret store and ships them to Vault and AWS Cert Manager to be used in various integrations. Some of these might be with via Argo CD's Vault plugin or through um, just 
general access through CERT manager as well, um, these certificates get issued. So um, yeah, uh, so for the certificate reissuance pro uh, process, certificates are renewed automatically at two thirds of their certificate lifetime if for just default parameters. So since we're using Let's Encrypt, this changed from a staggering annual rotation to a rotation of every 60 days, which enforced a lot of automation around the process, um, and as well as a scheduled cron job that checks for certificate drift in, in Vault and AVS Certificate Manager. Also, this uh, cron job where applicable um, updates values to match uh, Kubernetes secret stores. Um, and emits Slack notifications of actions taken. So we're always informed of when a rotation occurs. And as well as that, m perhaps most importantly, it puts all certificates in the Vault Secret Store in a, in a, in a path um, that is very organized uh, per domain. So um, all services downstream that need to reach out to them can retrieve them in a systematic manner. And without further ado, I'm going to hand things off to Jacob to continue the rest of the presentation. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, so for a certificate uh, uh, audit and observability, we use Datadog metrics and alerts. Uh, and we base those primarily off of AWS ACM entries. Uh, it's, a, it's a very useful heuristic way to look at um, expiration times and get uh, data points that give us more information about what's going on and why. Um, the system is pretty predictable, and uh, uh, we've configured our alerts in such a way that if something doesn't behave in a desirable, predictable manner, such as a certificate fails to renew, we're going to get a paging event well before that certificate would be a problem if it were to expire. Um, in the case of, like, let's say a certificate's going to expire in 30 days, we're going to, if for whatever reason we have not renewed it, it, let's say 20 days in, we would get a page and we would have 20 days to rectify the problem. So it's, um, our alerting does a pretty good job about keeping us in the know about what's going on in a pr predictable and consistent manner. We're also able to use the certificate transparency logs to make our metrics a little bit more granular in terms of what we're feeding into Datadog. For um, the migration process to uh, from our legacy um, lack of consistency to where we are now, the uh, primary uh, tools that we leverage is Argo CD's Vault plugin um, allows us to make Kubernetes secret to allows us to use uh, Kubernetes services with Helm templating for inline uh, secret configuration, allowing us to reference the desirable payloads from Vault. Uh, we can use the Vault agent injector, um, which is a Kubernetes sidecar that uh, runs um, along with the container and is able to be updated as needed. Um, and then all integrations use dynamic authentication methods against Vault to read the certificate payload data securely. Um, some of the issues we ran into in our migration process is that some of the more legacy systems did not have the current uh, certificate route for Let's Encrypt. Uh, for a custom CA, we already knew that we were going to have to make the route available in the CA chain, and that was a little bit of a more predictable issue. Um, for the case of Let's Encrypt, uh, we did have to work with teams on a case-by-case -case basis to make sure that the CA chains for the respective services was able to uh, be set correctly so that we could have some assurance that uh, the certificate would be able to continue to work as intended. Um, one of the components of this project is that because the Let's Encrypt issued certificates have a significantly shorter lifetime in the form of 90 days versus 365, uh, automation became absolutely mandatory. Um, in the case of um, getting teams to migrate to using whatever their previous deployment method was, um, did require some understanding of what their existing deployment method, whether it be by hand or some form of automation, and then being able to work with them to use a more consistent and predictable manner. For the case of Kubernetes uh, services that used um, the Vault Agent Injector, uh, because of the way that persistent storage is handled in Kubernetes when you are referencing a secret from Vault, that secret is um, uh, that secret's immutable, and so you need a service like Reloader to be able to tell the pod to restart and get the updated vault payload. Um, once we implemented that, um, once we implemented Reloader, we were able to resolve this issue in a predictable manner. And that's something you can just bake into all of your pods. 
and accounting for cases where tools like Reloader were absolutely necessary and they did take a bit more time, but it got us to a better end result. Um, using our new system, some of the advantages we've gained are that all of our certificates are deployed and renewed automatically without any human intervention whatsoever. Um, we, as mentioned previously, we do have alerting in the event that something does not behave as predicted, but we have yet to run into a situation where we actually trip any of our monitors because of something working inadvertently, which is pretty nice. We use uh, version control through GitHub to request a new certificate or to alter in any way, shape, or form what the certificate request is, such as if we add new SANS to a certificate, we can actually update our system in such a way where we'll replace the existing one in all the correct places. Um, the shorter certificate lifetime of secrets, even though it does require automation to work, does equate to a better security set of practices. And in the long term, that's probably better for us as an organization. And Let's Encrypt being free um, gives a sizable cost reduction year over year and has almost no operational cost to um, maintain within Kubernetes. Uh, some of the lessons we learned from um, this project were that accounting for organizational resistance to change when implementing automation at scale is a must. Uh, standardization around automation, um, once implemented, does reduce the possibility of replacement-based incidents quite a bit. Um, and your, your most likely case of having an incident related to it when you do a system like we did is to actually not use the system at all in a given case. So it, as we get more um, services onboarded and make this a more universal setup, we're expecting to see next to no problems when it comes to certificate replacements. Um, enforcing frequent rotation via automation does also expose misconfigurations within a given service that may very well not have ever been noticed. And when you're doing changes like this at scale um, and you do see a problem, um, you do have to fix it or work with the respective teams uh, who maintain said service, but it is something that is a worthwhile audit exercise for um, any kind of organization at scale. Uh, for any questions and uh, for any questions, feel free to direct them uh, further and we will proceed from there. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.